Hey guys, D Mike here from another episode of Super Nintendo Sundays coming back at you with some more Kirby 3. Here we go. This game is very strange, and I don't mean that in like it's meant to be strange. Obviously, Kirby is one of those franchises that should be near and dear to everyone's heart, unless you're some sort of a weirdo. But yeah, this game is very weird in like the way it's designed and like what you're expected to do. I've played other Kirby games. I've played Kirby's Dreamland 1 and 2, both on the Game Boy. And and I've also played Kirby's Dreamland, I think, for the regular Nintendo. I believe that was the first iteration of Kirby. But yeah, this game is kind of strange in that I don't quite get the purpose of the Animal Buddies. Like I've been playing through it now. This is my second episode of this game, so clearly I'm a master of Kirby. But yeah, it just feels kind of slow and a little strange, but I don't know. It's fun. It's enjoyable. It's very cute. We're met with some keys here in this cave. No match for Kirby, though. He just sucks them right up. Hopefully he doesn't eat them. But yeah, and what I also think is interesting, too, is that there are multiple enemies that give the same power up, which I think is cool. So we're going to pass on the cat and we're going to go with the octopus. I still don't know their names, so if you do know, feel free to clue me in. I might read it. And uh, yeah. This is a poor choice though, because she is super slow and I don't really know what the value is to use her. I don't know what the value is to use any, any of these animal buddies, to be honest. It's supposed to, you know, kind of flesh out the game and make it more fun, I suppose, but I don't know. But we got these cool green launchers, and those are fast, so that's nice. I guess I shouldn't really be expecting my Kirby game to be like Sonic or anything, but this is adorable. This animation is great. I'm using Stone Kirby to swing around like a hammer throw. I think that's pretty fun. Very good. Yeah, that's one of the animation, I would say, pros in this game. Also, I don't know if this is like a mini boss fight or like a heads up to something in the future, but I don't know how to get to it. So you can have a little teaser of what that fight could have been. We're just going to pretend like it didn't happen, though. Looked a little bit too fire for my tastes. And uh, yeah, what I didn't know is that the octopus can cling to the ceiling, as you just saw that. But I did not pay attention to that when I played. So that's only going to happen accidentally. Instead, we have to deal with these weird anemones shooting their goo at us. That seems to kind of be a theme on this channel. There's a lot of... There's like an underestimated, at least I thought, amount of external forces trying to shoot their goo at us. And I don't know why that's a thing, but... Also, the animation of her grabbing with her little tentacle or whatever that is... Uh, it is adorable. So she can grab items, she can grab kind of the stars, bricks, power-ups, stuff like that. Very adorable. And thankfully she's around, because we really need this Maxim Tomato. We are cruising for a bruising right now. Also, I guess my self-preservation when I play Kirby isn't very high, because I feel like it's so easy that I don't necessarily need to be super careful. I mean, there's always a one-up or a Maxim Tomato, or the the energy bottle, like those are always around. Yeah, I'm, I'm starting to look at it now and like realize just how many times this animation of like her grabbing the ceiling is happening. I totally didn't pay any attention to that when I played. I had no idea. I was just wondering why the game was trying to slow me down. Nobody slows down D-Mike Industries. We are full steam ahead at all times, except for when we're not. So, yeah, that was it. Level one, or level four, I guess. Done. And this is also something that I'm learning. These like end levels are supposed to be having characters that are like looking for a special animal buddy and then you like get the little heart thing. We've only done that once with the weird pickle guy. Or not the pickle guy, they got the baseball hat. And that was like a weird, like, I don't know, like an 8-bit character from something else. I don't know if that's from like Kirby, like I've never seen that before. Also, I totally, uh, butcher this one. Whoops. Um, but hey, at least, you know, we can just sweep it under the rug. My, my play style. 
the yeah that dynamic of like the animal buddies and like there's somebody at the end of the level looking to meet them i don't i don't understand that this one is actually pretty clear and i totally screwed up but i wanted to explore a little bit as you could see on the intro screen there was some sort of a fish look like maybe they're looking for kine but we already used kine sort of we used kine inappropriately we used kine out of water so I'm not entirely sure why they give you Kine in this level either, because this is like a forest, and Kine is, correct me if I'm wrong, a fish. So, you know, Kine exists. Ku does not. Ku is not real. But we will use Ku because we've already used Kine. The Animal Buddies thing is the one thing in this game that I just do not get. It was really well used in like Kirby's Dream Land 2, but there's so many, and I don't feel like their utility makes any sense. Like, this is actually kind of nice, because of how fast Koo can fly. But then it also sort of feels like you're cheesing it when you play, so... I don't know. I like Koo. For all of, for all intents and purposes, even though they don't exist, I like it. Whatever it's trying to do, it's carrying us around, very nice. And I really want to get one of these guys, steal their power up, they're like the... The, like the spike power up, but it's really hard to get in between these logs. We can't squeeze in that little tight space. Well, I mean, we can once we kill it, but that's not quite what we're going for. So instead, we'll just ignore all of them. They look like like little murdery Hirsch kisses, or maybe the uh, the hugs. Those are the ones that are like the white ones with uh, the chocolate swirls in them and stuff. Those are good. White chocolate. Who likes white chocolate? Anybody? Anybody a fan of white chocolate? It's kind of polarizing. But yeah, so we have um, gravely disappointed. Disappointed! Um, Mrs. Mrs. Kine, I guess. I don't know. And, you know, we deserve that. That's, that's on us. That's what we get for not bringing the, the romantic couple together. We deprived her of love, and that's not okay. Love is the greatest power of all, and we ignored it, because we are, are being carried by an owl. Which are amazing animals, by the way, if they were real. Um, being able to, like, fly silently in the dark and, you know, be very terrifying when they eat, like, mice and stuff. Ugh. If you're ever interested, look up videos of kind of like barn owls, or like, those uh, snow owls when they're eating. Oh my goodness, those things are terrifying. But they're meant to be. That's why it's, it's the government trying to trick us. But anyway, now we have Rick, who... I don't know, I remember having better experiences with Rick when I played Dreamland 2, but I could be wrong. However, we have given Rick a horrible case of indigestion, and we are all out of Tums, so he's gonna be spitting hot fire. And that's actually really great. I think Flame is one of my favorite power-ups. It's cute and it's effective. What is not effective though is me forgetting how to get that one up. It's okay though, we have eight. We'll be fine. Rick's looking like he just ate a nice hot curry or a hot salsa perhaps. I do love a nice tomato salsa. I've had pineapple salsa too. It's very good. Like you can make salsa pretty much out of anything, to be honest. I'm not entirely sure what the rules are for what constitute a salsa or not, but I will probably eat any of them, even when they are nuclear fire and they make my my bum very sad the next day. That happens uh, sometimes, always. I don't know. It's often enough that I'm never going to learn my lesson. It's just too hard to, to ignore. What's one of those foods that you just, you know, you shouldn't have, but you just do, you know? That, that, that's kind of one for me. Same with, like, dairy. You know, it's really hard to, like, ignore a nice bowl of ice cream or, you know, right before you go to bed, half a half a block of cheddar cheese. Some of us are cursed with being intolerant to lactose, I will not tolerate it. 
hasn't done anything, you know, to deserve this, but I won't tolerate it. So, there's always something for everybody. And I'm not talking about allergies, obviously. If you're, like, allergic to, like, peanuts or certain types of fruit and stuff that would kill you, you know, that doesn't really count. But maybe there's certain things that just kind of make your tummy a little, you know, a little grumpy. And that's kind of it for me. I guess lactose intolerance is kind of like a mild allergy, if you want to think of it like that. Makes me feel very weak. But, you know, it is what it is. When I'm at home, I can do whatever I want. But when I'm on the go, <laughs> not so much. This is a very long level. That's one of the things I noticed is like these are getting a little bit longer. And I say that as we're in the second half of World 1. So we still have four worlds to go. As we continue to traipse through this forest. And some of these enemies, I just, I don't know. I don't get them. Like they don't quite look like they fit. In the Kirby game, like these arrow shooting guys, these archers, the spiders do. Spiders are cute. Also, I apologize for anybody with arachnophobia because there are a heckin' ton of spiders in this episode, so. Not something that I, uh, endorse. I mean, I, I like spiders, like, not like I don't like them, not like I'm gonna marry them, but, you know, if I see a spider at home and, you know, he's just hanging out, having a good time, scoop him up and let him enjoy the good outdoors, which is probably not what they want. Like, that's the kind of, like, kind of the polarization of spiders. It's like, either you kill it, which I think is mean, didn't deserve that, or you let it outside. Which, in reality, like, I don't think that's what that spider wants, because it's just, it's just being real cash in your home. Eating gnats and flies and mosquitoes, you know. Being a, being a complete G about it. And then we scoop it up, and then we take it outside, where maybe it you know, is way less suitable. It, you've got spiders that are just trying to hang out and they're like, hey, I have squatters rights. And you're like, well, actually, now you're going back outside. It doesn't feel like the nicest thing to do, but it is what it is. So we have depraved the clown. Deprive, deprave, deprive the clown, which I'm okay with because clowns are kind of creepy. And since clowns are creepy, the game rewards us with a one-up to show that I was correct. And that's how that works. So here we go. Six levels down, and it's time for the infamous first boss of Kirby games, Wispy Woods. I wish they would have kind of come back with the original Wispy Woods theme that they use in Kirby's Dream Land 1. That's like an iconic track. But anyway, same type of fight. He's gonna, he's gonna try to blow us, and then... In response, we will shoot fruit in his face. I think some of those might be vegetables too, because I think I think I saw carrots, but you know. But you gotta get him right in the mouth. You gotta you gotta hit him right in his mouth. Shoot it, shoot it, shoot it right in the mouth. So there we go. And he's got eight bars of health. Also, this is terrifying. I don't remember this being in Kirby, but I mean, I guess this is kind of fitting because it's almost Halloween. And this game will this game episode will actually go up, I believe, on Halloween, so this is kind of spooky, right? But creepy, possessed, demonic Wispy Woods, uh, dead. But we don't get to see him cry, and I love that. I love making my enemies cry. How else are you supposed to drink the tears of your enemies if you can't make them cry? That's part of the rewards, the spoils of war. All right, everybody. So that was the second half of level one. We'll take on level two next time on Super Nintendo Sundays. I've been D-Mike. Thank you for watching. I'll see you later. Bye.